<laughs> There's definitely something different about the race here in Leger. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy when it comes to the fans going wild. Everyone knows the fans are wild here, including the fans. So they all go into the race with this understanding that this is their moment to shine. Mad outfits, excessive drinking, insane noisemakers, dildo chainsaws, and a reckless disregard for their own safety. It's amazing to see the passion, but I've got to say, did that drone shot of everyone rushing into the finish area look exactly like the animations for crowd dynamics that lead to crush deaths? Like, I don't know if I'm just being old, but <laughs> fans are going to be fans, and clearly a few police officers dotted in the finish area isn't quite cutting it. As far as I'm aware, no one was seriously injured, but proper crowd control is absolutely a concern. Well, that's the negative concern dad stuff out of the way. Now onto the good gear. As the junior women's race kicked off, we were quickly introduced to the main challenge of this Leger track. Abigail Ronka blew up one of the lower turns and crashed in a cloud of dust. The loose terrain would catch out many racers this weekend. Sasha Mills had a breakout result this weekend and clearly loved the dusty conditions, which must have felt similar to back home in Australia. Second place for her. It was the other Sasha I had picked for the win. Sasha Ernest was on a run with five seconds to the green until she crashed on an awkward right-hander. The line she took has a rut to hold your tires, but it looked like she turned in just a little bit too much, slid the front wheel against the inside edge of the rut and just laid it down. Even with this crash, she still finished in fourth. The rider that really earned the win this weekend was Colombian Valentina Roa Sanchez. She looked like she really wanted it and her aggressive riding style gelled with the track this weekend. She was clearly stoked with her first win this year and it was well earned. In the junior men's race, Nathan Ponvian pulled the trigger on that mad corner gap and he made it look so smooth and stylish. No one else did this in any race runs in junior or elite, which makes it all the more impressive. Unfortunately, he had a crash up top after setting a super fast split time and held the pace with the winner down the bottom. No podium this week though. John Mosel from Canada on Forbidden Synthesis put together a season best performance this weekend. He laid some serious horsepower down on the motorway. The dude just didn't stop pedaling and it worked. Smashed the speed trap and sent it into second place and his best result so far. UK racer Oscar Griffiths showed mad commitment out the start, over committing in that first turn. He was riding so aggressive it clearly took its toll as he fatigued and the bike started to get away from him leading to a big washout at the bottom. Luca Thurlow also fell foul to the conditions when a new hole that had developed upset his balance coming into a turn causing him to wash the front on that super tricky turn. Evan Metcalf has been on the podium twice this year and is part of the new wave of fast Americans smashing the World Cups. He's a big fan of course markers as he smashed the first one and then clipped one on the fastest turn on the track with his handlebar. Like, I cannot describe how scary that is but he was unfazed on his way to third. No one has an answer for Ryan Pinkerton right now. He gave everyone the middle finger breaking technique today and rode super confident race into first place. I asked him why he does this and apparently when he was a wee kid he couldn't reach the brakes with his index fingers so he just learned to use his middle fingers. He's got an 88 point lead in the series now but with 120 points available over the next two rounds the series isn't quite decided yet. The semi-final saw some cool manoeuvres like Million Set and Marine Cabaru cleaning the stump drop to inside shark fin gap. That's so technical and hard to do but they nailed it. Monica Harasnik and Valley Hull gapping 30 foot onto the backside of a roller on that top off camber was so sick. I love seeing the girls pulling tech gaps like this. Luke Williamson and Jackson Connolly competed for getting those top turns the best out of everyone. Luke had a sick hop between the turns, but I think Jacko had the higher speed and commitment. Luke definitely won the punch the course marker hardest comp though. He hopped out the left turn without setting up quite wide enough for the right, punched the pad with the force of a thousand suns and plowed that 6D helmet into the deck. David Palazzari showed us what an Italian Superman looks like and it was majestic. Great save and he still made it into finals. 
Jacob Dixon took a closer look at the dust to make sure it was proper authentic. All he had to do was be a few centimetres wide of the line and down he went and he did, yep, he said, that is real, that's proper dust. He checked. Jackson Goldston must have been on an absolute heater because that drone just could not catch him. What does everyone actually think of the drone, by the way? Like, I agree it can make things look quite intense and exciting, but honestly, I hate it. It often misses the riders. Some people find it a bit nauseating and it's so hard to see what the rider is doing. I mean, maybe it's just me, let us, let us know. In the women's final, I was super impressed that Nina Hoffman managed to fight through the illness and fatigue to still score a podium result in fourth. She only clawed back about 20 points on Valley, but every little helps. Eleonora Farina has been coming into form with a European champs win, but she was one of the riders to get caught out by the dust. She was a little late on the turn, pushed the front, and that was it. Shout out to Millie Yonset and Gloria Scarzi for both getting career best results finishing in 4th and 5th respectively. Super cool for them and nice for the fans to see things getting so competitive. Also, American Anna Newkirk with a career best 6th, only a fraction of a second off the podium. Monica Rasnick is back to her best. Her riding style is so good when she's riding confident. She's very active, nice and centered, like a BMX rider working the bike through the terrain. Her line choice before the bottom steeps was impeccable and so clean, staying high of the bumps and out of the ruts on her way to second place. It wasn't enough to stop the on-form Marine Cabaru though. After years of injuries, setbacks and unlucky races, she grafted her way back into form at the biggest race of her year at her home event and she stepped up and rode a strong and confident run to her first win of 2023. This is the dream scenario for Marine and the French fans and to be honest, we're pretty happy to see her back too. Today wasn't world champ and World Cup Series leader Valley Hall's day. She attacked the first turns and pushed things out into the moon dust towards the marshmallow marker in the second turn. She tried to correct but the front wheel slid, clipped the marker and took what looked to be an extremely heavy slam to the head. Apparently after getting back on she then crashed again in the next wood section then thankfully cruised it down to the finish with a few goon jumps and a sick scrub to mask her disappointment. Hopefully her head is all good as she still leads the overall going into the final two rounds so there are more battles ahead. Adam Rodjek had a great race making it into the final as a privateer and rolled the dice in his run. He came into that first multi-line section with so much speed he nearly crumpled when he slid in the braking zone. It was a heck of a save. Colombian Juan Munoz is always one to watch in practice with his wild lines and exciting riding style. He converted that into a top result this weekend with 13th. His line before popping out the trees was mad. Loads of people were dropping off the stump, but most were slowing down a lot before doing it so they could set up for the next turn. Juan didn't slow down and just carved the turn super inside and somehow made it work. Very impressive riding. Taylor Langson must have been eyeing up the big gap that Nathan Ponvian pulled, but had to change his mind at the last second, I guess. This resulted in one of the wildest press up save nose manuals that I've seen in a long time. It's lucky he's a big horse. With Laurie Greenland sitting out of his race run due to sickness, Bruni had a longer than normal gap with no riders before his run. This can sometimes allow the grippier racing line to dry out and blend in with the surrounding dust, making it harder to read the track ahead. Bruni made it work regardless though, but there were some drifts and a clip out mid run. Maybe it was the tire though. Bruni switched to a rear spike to help deal with the deep dust. A last minute decision after his semi-final crash maybe? It may have been better in the loose, but he could have lost time on the hard pack and we'll never know and fifth isn't where he wanted to be. Andreas Kolb did a few keen things on his run. The speed tuck weight back pedal on the off camber is something you don't see every day. His gap over the stump after the lake was delightful. Then he washed out on that flat right, clipped out, landed foot off and just kept on trucking. Nearly tucked the front in that awkward right textbook perfect edge of grip two wheel drift on that routy left bit too much handbrake coming into the stump drop but kept it upright to finish in second place kind of a carbon copy of dakota's loose run from last week into second you know who wasn't a carbon copy of dakota last week dakota 
like many others this week, he just got a tiny bit offline and the dust god slapped him down in a heartbeat. Game over. Jackson Goldston got creative on his run. He was swerving around holes, gapping way up high on banks and generally demonstrating creative riding and insane power to weight. His pace down the final steeps was unmatched and the speed he carried onto the final motorway was insane on his way to fourth place. But Verger though, his speed on the motorway, that was even more insane. He was four kilometers an hour faster than the winner and he had the fastest bottom sector. Let's compare him to Jackson to see what made the difference. So before we hit play, notice Loris is heading wide and Jackson is heading to that inside. Let's roll clip. So they drop into the corner. He shrouds that inside as Loris goes all the way around and at the lip of the jump, they're exactly equal. They should be carrying similar speed. Down into the next turn, Loris sets up high and look, he's already turning right while Jackson is still turning left. He's gonna be off the brakes. Loris is off the brakes. He's carrying speed down into the next jump. They've got different camera angles. That's really annoying and confusing. But at the road, you can see Loris is definitely in front and that extra speed is tucks is going to carry down here. Loris has got the tuck pedal dialed while Jackson is standing up taller. He's carrying the speed. Loris is already over that jump. Jackson is miles behind. The speed trap for Loris was a sweet nice 69 as he crosses the line and he takes it by 0.88 just on this bottom split. Give it up for this tuck pedal. This Loris, the special Loris tuck pedal. He, the special French slow Loris tuck pedal, the, he, he did it. The bottom sector didn't decide the race today though. Benoit Collange decided he was going to win and he said about it. He matched Kolb on the first three splits and then kept it tidier than Kolb down the bottom as he accelerated his way down to his first ever World Cup win. He won the quali, he won the semi and he won the final. The only male racer to ever do it. Benoit is an absolute hero. He's always been a favourite of everyone here at Pink Bike World Cup Productions as he's just a nice dude who grafted and grafted till it finally happened. That's five different elite male winners with four of them being first time winners this year. What an exciting season so far and there's still a couple more to go. Pink Bike Racing also had a decent weekend with myself doing my first timed World Cup run of the year after breaking my back. Despite the lack of bike time, I was three seconds off qualifying, which I'm really happy about. Wyatt is finding his pace again after injury and was just off qualifying with a crash. The kid will race this year, I've no doubt. Amy is finding her feet again. Oh my God. After a difficult two races with a seventh in quality and eighth in finals. Not where she wants to be, but it's coming back. Thibaut had a great race at home. He qualified, finished in 41st in the semis, which was only about a second of making it into the final. And that's it from us here at Pink Bike. Thanks for tuning in and liking the video. We'll see you again in about three weeks in West Virginia. Subscribe so you don't miss it. In a bit, I'm gonna go for a cold shower now. I'm absolutely sweating. Melt.